want to show you some techniques. There are actually three sections here using the Swiss CDC multi-clamp. The first one is obvious. It's just a CDC. I've got two pieces of CDC here. One in done, the other one in light olive. And it just happens to be half. I don't use those tables or, or foam. I just match up the middles and then I cut off a section. And I, I usually cut going to tie in pairs anyway, either fours or by six, it just evens them out. Well, I've lined up the CDC, put in the clamp, and I'm cutting off the stem. I really like this clamp. I was one of the first adapters for some of the other clamps, and they're not strong enough. This thing really clamps down on the material, and you're going to see how uh, critical that is, and, and especially with the last tech, well, even the second technique. I've matched up the butt sections, and I just want the butt sections uh, exposed, and then I'm going to create my loop. This is um, this doesn't matter. The hook is just a hook. The thread happens to be 17 aught uni, but it doesn't matter in this place. I'm just I'm using the 17 aught because it's very very light, and the CDC you don't need to use a six aught thread with it. And the 17 aught works just fine. So I've tied it off. My loop's probably about six to seven inches long. And I tie it off at the back end so it closes properly. I'll take a little dab of wax, dubbing wax, and I'll smear it on there with my finger. I don't like using the stick, the lipstick, because it just puts too much wax. And if you just put a hint of wax on here, it'll hold it. It'll hold it in position. That's all you need it till you before you can spin. So I'm not going to take my... I've got a... Uh, Swiss CDC uh, multi-loop tool and I've created the loop and opened it up. Now see how the tip of my multi-clamp is touching the hook? I need to have that much space because I know that when I spin it it's going to retract or get smaller and I need a little bit of space there so it doesn't break. Now closing off the the loop with that multi-tool and I'm going to use my bodkin to hold up the thread as I spin that multi-loop tool. Now I don't go overboard and spin it real real hard. I just just a nice build or I'll break the thread. So I want the thread is strong enough I just don't want to uh, break it. And I still may break it. Now I've got a nice brush and I'm printing back those fibers. I'll actually use um, hand sanitizer, alcohol gel. See, I broke it. Not a big deal because it ain't going to go that far. And I'll just get a pair of uh, hackle pliers. It doesn't unravel, that's for darn sure. So now I'm just going to wrap Cosensic wraps up to the back of the eye. Now. I know because of this I can preen those feathers back. I'll take a brush at the end of it and just brush them out. Now I'll use up to like three different pieces of CDC. I'll go real dark, a highlight, and then a normal like an olive. So the highlight I'll use like a yellow or sulfur. <laughs> now I'm just uh, shortening my the throw on my thread. I'm going to tie off that dubbing brush of CDC. And I'm going to create just a little bit of a head and then I'll wet finish it. And I like to do two sets of three wraps instead of just six. It was taught by a good friend a long time ago. Six would do it, but I like to do two sets of three. I trim my thread, and then I'm going to take my little metal toothbrush and brush out those fibers. Gorgeous collars that come out here. It just looks really buggy. This is what the finished technique looks like.
Now the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to take a zonker strip and use it. I've been tying a lot of uh, micro game changers and this technique lets me use the zonker strip, pine scroll zonker strip, as my body material. And it swims gorgeously in the, in the water. I have switched threads though. I'm in a 6 aught olive uni thread because I need the strength in order to spin that zonker strip. I'm creating my loop. Once again, just a little dab of dubbing wax. I've actually taken my wax and transferred it into a little makeup glass thing that works really well. I got it from my wife. She was throwing it out, and I just melted my wax into it, and I just leave it open and dab my finger into it. It's like that stuff the cashiers use, or the, yeah, the cashiers use at the banks. Now, see how that, that loop can stay there, and it won't spin. Now I'm taking my zonker strip and I'm measuring it up against the opening in my multi-clamp. Now you can see down in the bottom right hand corner I'm going to take that hair and I'm going to wet it a little bit so it sticks out. And then I'm going to stick it inside the jaws of my multi-clamp and have the hide come right, across, right up, right but tightly up to the, to the jaws of the back side of the jaws of the multi-clamp. That way I get all the hair out there. Now I'll take my other clamp and I'll match it up against it and I'll switch to it and then I'll trim off the hide. And it leaves just enough of the butt sections of the hair to use in a dubbing loop. What I'm doing right there is just trimming off that hide. Now go ahead and grab my multi-loop tool and I didn't, it didn't have to spin and so that's kind of worked out really well. Once again, slip the jaws, the business end of the clamp into there, put the tip and trap those hairs. Trust me, the uh, wax is wor worth putting on there. Now I'm going to wrap the uh, loop, the end of the loop, a couple times around the hook portion of the multi-loop tool. And once again, I'll use my uh, bodkin as my finger to, to so I can spin that hair. Now you can see I can be a little bit more rough with it, but I still don't go overboard. Now I'm going to brush out that hair. Now this is a really good portion to take some of that uh, hand sanitizer that all of us are using right now and to Preen back, preen back the, that hair, that zonker hair. And the reason it works is because it's alcohol. And so it, after a while, it just uh, evaporates. And so you've been able to control the hair. It's like using uh, Brill Cream, if you guys remember what that stuff was, or VO5. And then see how I preened it back, and now I'm just wrapping it with concentric circles to the back of the eye. Now, I've been using this a lot for a long time on my micro game changers. It's just perfect for each of the sections and the section that I get out of a multi-clamp is perfect for you know a six or eight millimeter micro micro shank game changer shank. Now of course like I always do I crowd the eye a little bit but I'm trying not to here and be a good kid. I'm just shorten, shortening the throw on my thread and getting as much out of that as I possibly can without crowding that eye. I'm going to tie it off. And do a couple whip finishes. And 
cut off my thread. Now I will take the brush and brush out that hair. Or fur. <laughs> And this is what the finished technique looks like. Now my last section is a compound loop. And I'm going to combine two pieces of zonker, uh, pine squirrel, zonker strip, and a patch of dare hair. And if you're familiar with the head of a fly for the micro game changer, you need to have that front end of it flare out so it creates a dead space behind it so that the back end can swim. And I came up with this crazy technique that works rather well. So right now I've just taken a clip. What did you see what I did was uh, I was able to gather that elk, elk hair and then right there what I was doing is evening up the tips just by opening, you know, facing the, uh, the clamp up vertically and then letting it drop. And it evens up the tips. Now I've got two small, this, this is about a half inch section of uh, pine scroll. This is in rust. And this will be the back end of the head of my micro game changer. And this is what gives me that little puff ball at the back side of it. And also, it adds uh, variety to it because it's got hair. So I've taken it and I've put it at the, uh, into my multi-clamp. And now I've got a piece of olive and I'll wet it again and let the hair stand out. and place it in multi-clap. Now, I've made this little plastic, what I call platen, out of um, oh, just plastic. It's a self-healing board, and cut a notch in it. And I've got a, an O-ring, and I'm going to put my, oh, my little platen, attach my multi-clap to my platen. In the bottom right, you can see it. What it does, you can see, now I'm going to open up the jaws and slip that dare here in between the two. Now it'll move a little bit, so don't be surprised. But now I've got all three different types of material in those jaws. Now I'm going to turn it over and make some, a slight adjustment. I need to pull out the squirrel a bit. and switch it over to the other multi-clamp. And this is where you really need the, the clamping power of this multi-clamp. Now I put it right up against the other jaws and then trim off the excess. And I've got a, that's my material, that's my compound loop. And so what I'm doing is turning deer hair into hackle. Now, once again, I'm going to create my loop. This is, once again, 6 odd uni, olive. doesn't matter. Now, you want that loop to be at least 6 or 7 inches long. The reason by, for it is that when you open that loop up, you don't have to open it that far to get, it, to, to get the base open. It gives you sufficient opening near the hook to put your jaws in. And tie it off really well. And bring my thread up to behind the eye. Now they it, it has a tendency when you wrap that sucker and twist. And so I'm gonna put a little I've untwisted it and I've got just a dab, once again, just a dab of dubbing wax. 
Now I'm going to take my multi-tool, hook it up. See how that space, because it's so long, doesn't give it a really wide gap, but it gives you a long, clear gap to stick the butt in, that blade, those blades in. Now I don't bring the jaw tip all the way up to the top because I know darn well it, it needs as much thread as it can get in order to create a brush. Now you just got to take your time here. A couple wraps around the hook. Make an adjustment. You can make some adjustments. Once again, my bodkin, and gently spin it at first. Just give it a chance to start. But if you can't tell, that is a gorgeous brush. And it'll lay down the the rust colored squirrel first and then lay down and then combine it with the elk hair or excuse me deer hair and then go to the olive see I can tell I gotta go a little bit further and see how it it, it, it gets shorter and shorter that's why you gotta live a little bit sp more space because you've got such thick material in there now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it through just concentric circles I'll brush it out a bit but I love the way this sucker looks in the water. It swims. And it creates that dead space behind the, the head of the fly so that the back end can swim. And I preen. Now I've actually used, once again, I'll use hand sanitizer and preen those feathers back. But I wanted you to see how fluffy this sucker was. And so I've opted not to use the uh, hand sanitizer right now. And it makes them smell minty fresh. <laughs> Just continue to wrap to the front. Now think of the combinations. You could slip in uh, dubbing in here. You could do the uh, Jerry French's uh, compound where you slip in different kinds of material and this is just for small flies but it creates a gorgeous head and you can also stick probably could stick some eyes on there and wrap it around the eyes it just broke the string uh, thread just broke on me so I but I caught it and I don't need it actually broke at the right time so I'm Shortening the throw on my thread. I'll then whip finish. And this one for sure, I'd put a, a spot of uh, super glue on the top and the bottom of that knot. and trim. Now I'll actually take two or three different kinds of deer hair and put it in. Oh, by the way, if you see that little white tube, that's just to protect my hand because that hook is sharp and it hurts when it pokes you. You get that nice blend. And this is what the uh, close up of the final technique looks like. Thank you for watching.